In a world where your every move is tracked, where computers peer into our everyday lives, where machines can determine your thoughts and feelings, one group seeks to separate some of the facts from the fiction and see just how possible some of these claims really are. For our project, we are using machine learning to classify emotions from facial images. Being able to classify different emotions from facial images has a variety of applications, for instance, gauging viewer response to advertising, be it positive or negative. Recognizing pain in hospital patients so nurses can respond more quickly as well as without having to monitor the patients themselves. Or for civil protection, being able to identify if someone is disgruntled or upset at an airport or a train station, or being able to see if someone is under the influence of narcotics. For our data, we needed a large database containing front-facing facial photos and corresponding emotional tabs. We decided to use the CK database for, from Carnegie Mellon University. This database contains 327 labeled images, and these images are classified into eight different emotions. Neutral, anger, contempt, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. We decided to only classify using surprise, disgust, and happiness because they had the highest distribution of images, and we were worried that having too small of a distribution for any individual classification could adversely affect some of the algorithms. For our approach, to classify the image's key facial landmarks needed to be extracted. The facial landmarks are significant points on the face, for example, eyebrows, mouth, eyes, etc. To extract these features, the Python library Dlib was used. Dlib uses a pre-trained learning algorithm to detect 68 different facial landmarks. Let's take a look at this process in action. So here we have this face of a disgruntled child. So if we pull up our algorithm and... Yeah. We can see that it pulls out those 68 key facial features, and we've got them color-coded into the different regions, just for your convenience. And if we close this, we can actually see the overlay of those features on top of the original image, and you can see how it really maps up, and it does a good job of identifying the face in frame. The extraction process is fairly quick. It could be used real-time for video as well, being able to pull individual frames. For the machine learning, after all the images have been passed through facial landmark extraction, a large matrix is created containing the features and labels. This feature matrix is used to train a series of different machine learning algorithms. All but one of the images is used to train the algorithm. The excluded image is used for testing. The process is then repeated 10,000 times and aggregated together. The results? We found that a linear support vector classification, naive Bayes, or convolutional neural network perform the best. Due to the reduced data set from which the algorithms must train, it makes sense that those algorithms best suited to operate with classifiers over small data sets would do the best. Expanding the data set in order to more effectively train these algorithms, as well as trying additional methods such as deep learning or reinforcement learning, would both be future steps for the project. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe for more content. And for more information, visit the link in the description.